I'm convinced that we could be the generation to end the death penalty. Here's the deal. Death sentences are the lowest they've been in almost half a century. Executions go lower every year. They're the lowest that they've been in over two decades. This year, there's only two states that are regularly executing people, Texas and Georgia. Most of uh, the United States has done away with the death penalty uh, in practice or even on the books. And, and most of the world has done away with the death penalty. When you look at the rest of the world, this is the company that we keep here in the U.S. when it comes to executions. China is the number one the biggest executioner in the world. And then Iran, Iraq, and Saudi Arabia, the US is number five, you know? And I think more and more people are convinced that we can do better than killing to show that killing is wrong. I got involved in the death penalty because the issues raised by the death penalty are bigger than just capital punishment. They're also about theology and how we understand why Jesus died. Race uh, and inequality uh, it raises so many questions. So check this out. Exactly where we are executing people today is where we were lynching African Americans a hundred years ago. In 1950, African Americans were like almost a quarter of the U.S. population, but they were 75% of the executions that were happening when it comes to the death penalty. Now, African Americans make up about 12% of the population of the U.S., but they make up almost half of the population of death row, and a third of the executions are African Americans. So we've got some major issues that many would say the death penalty is the direct descendant of lynching, that it's a more palpable way that we've come to take black lives. The state isn't perfect. You know, it's funny because there's a growing movement of conservatives concerned about the death penalty that don't want the government to be entrusted with uh, health care and things like that, but somehow we still entrust it with the power of life over death. So there's a movement around that. And I think it's very interesting because, in fact, uh, we've made a lot of mistakes when it comes to innocence. 156 people have been exonerated from death row. 156 people in 26 states. That's almost 1,800 years of lost life of people that were wrongfully convicted and put on death row. And you think of that, for every nine people that we've executed, one person has been exonerated. Can you imagine if for every 10 planes, like one of them crashed? Like we would ground planes for a little while. And I think it's time that we halt all executions. But I think we could do even better than that. Here's one of the things that I discovered as I was writing Executing Grace. The death penalty has survived in America, not in spite of Christians, but because of us. One of my friends who's a death row chaplain said, the Bible belt has become the death belt. Wherever Christians have been most concentrated is where the death penalty has flourished, but it's time to change that. If you ask Americans, like, uh, would Jesus be for the death penalty? 95% say, no, Jesus wouldn't be for the death penalty. But the problem is us Christians. Like, many of us are for it, but that's changing so quickly. Like, 80% of millennial Christians born after 1980 are against the death penalty because we can't reconcile it with our faith. The death penalty will be on the ballot in three states. Three states will be deciding whether or not the death penalty has a future in their state. Nebraska, California, and Oklahoma. So tell everybody you know in those states, in November, take a stand to make death penalty history in your state. We can do better and we must. I've got a few ideas. Let's get really concrete. One of them is I think we need people to go public against the death penalty. We've seen some great voices historically. Martin Luther King was passionately against the death penalty. Mother Teresa, now Pope Francis and other popes. But we, we, we've seen celebrities, Susan Sarandon, Martin Sheen, Danny Glover, a host of celebrities. But we need more and more voices. We need some Christian writers and musicians. We need some of the pastors and faith leaders that you respect to take a little risk and go vocal on this. So encourage them and do it yourself. Uh, post a selfie of you against the death penalty like uh, friends of ours around the world have. So on January 17th, faith leaders, murder victims, family members, families of the executed, lawyers and pastors, we're going to gather together on the steps of the Supreme Court and call for a halt to all executions in 2017. And we're going to call for an end to the death penalty once and for all.
Violence is the disease, not the cure. We can live without the death penalty.